Here are three examples of cheap or free data transfer and serial networking solutions for the Commodore 64. The first of which is C64TPC, available for around £20 to £25 pounds and is usually available through the eBay shop. It consists of a small box, one end connecting to an IBM PC via the serial and the other end connecting to the C64's own disk drive serial socket. Or it can be daisy chained through a real C64 disk drive. This device allows the user to read and write to disk images stored on the PC. Once the hard and software have been installed, operation is simplicity itself. All you need do are activate the relevant virtual disk drives and drag and drop the disk images, for the Commodore 64 to be able to access these disk images in the conventional fashion. However, the C64 TPC is deficient in one or two areas. For example, it can only access disk images, and even then, only disk images which do not contain their own fast loaders. So that rules out most later demos, for example. But it's cheap and effective and it does all it says on the tin. But as long as you don't try and access a folder containing too many disk images, for example 500 or 1000, the program won't stall and you'll be as happy as a sandboy. This is the only glitch I think is really worthy of complaint. If I really must use a disk image on an actual Commodore 64, then I can always trust Star Commander if C64 TPC fails to cut the mustard from time to time. I prefer to use the DOS based version because I don't much fancy piddling about with batch files in order to use the Windows one. Again, installation and operation is simple. Buy yourself one of the even cheaper serial data transfer cables from the X1541 range. One end connects directly into the back of a C64 disk drive and the other connects to the parallel port on the PC. Dependent on the age of the PC, you may need to boot into the BIOS to manually toggle the two-way data transfer mode. But other than this, it's completely simple. On the software side, you are faced with two windows, one representing the source and the other representing the data destination. In this case, the source is the Commodore 64 floppy disk drive and the destination is the PC hard drive. And because this software is so easy to get into, after a few minutes you will soon be shuttling disk image data backwards and forwards with a few simple keystrokes. This is just the kind of thing I really like. And lastly, we come to TapServe, which is short for Tape Server. It is the cassette variant of Star Commander, and like Star Commander the software is free and it also uses any of the cables from the X1541 range, which is extremely handy. The serial end of the cable can be connected directly to the Commodore 64, or daisy chained through a disk drive as long as the unit is powered off. Once the TapServe software has been booted into the Commodore 64, it is in a state of readiness, and you can enter the simple one-line command in DOS to kick off the process of shuttling tape data backwards and forwards. Just follow the on-screen prompt and you quite literally cannot go wrong. Once the dataset's play button has been pressed, the Commodore 64 sets about re-channeling the data. Rather than being compiled into memory, as usual, the C64 routes the data back out of the serial socket again on its way to the PC. Once the job has been finished, a tap file is created. Just as easily, the tape data can be shuttled back the other way. This method of cassette duplication is preferable, because each copy is a one-to-one -one digital transfer. There is no loss of quality as you would expect with analogue. 
Most people would use their hi-fis when copying old data tapes. But there is a method of digitally duplicating cassettes with the Commodore 64. And that is to daisy chain two data sets together by plugging one into the connector found inside the casing of another. Analog copying was always a very hit and miss affair. Not least because the Commodore 64 used a method of reading phase changes between the beeps recorded on a cassette. Now, copying on a hi-fi, or through a PC sound card, doesn't often give you these important phase changes. One word of warning. Not every PC can successfully run TapServe. This is because modern computers are so fast that they can't be guaranteed to synchronise to the Commodore 64's bus. You may need to have a spare PC on standby, but second-hand machines are dirt cheap so you can still make a considerable saving by utilising these cheaper methods as opposed to the more expensive 1541 Mark III, for example. But it's horses for courses. I'm perfectly happy using two separate PCs for my data transfer duties. And by and large, I've never been happier. 